number one, right? Draw the symbol and give the correspondent table for three primary logic gates. <laughs> All right, so the symbols are and this is an or and this is a not. And the and true table, you all start at 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, A and B, and the output will be 0 and 0 will give you 0, 1 and 0 will give you 0, 1 and 0 will give you 0, 1 and 1 will give you 1. All right, that will fetch you a nice hefty 2 marks. Then we do in the OR, which will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And the OR now will give us 0, 1, 1, 1. And then the NOT gate now is basically A goes in 0 and 1 and comes out as 1 and 0. Alright, two marks each. Okay, the following is a true table for an exclusive OR gate. The exclusive OR is going to be a particular circuit. And they want us to use any primary logic gates from above, design and draw a circuit which behaves exactly like an exclusive OR gate, right? So we put the plus sign in middle because it's the sum of these two things here, right? Because it's this OR that will give you um, a 1. And then you just put in the not x here and the y there and then you put in the y not y here and x there and these are multiplied so you can file dot in between to, to show that it's been multiplied after that now we have to draw the circuit so we start with the plus sign which is a or gate and the or gate is like that from that plus sign we have two ands that take place so we'll put the ands and the next and and inside those two ands, we have different values of inputs coming in. We have our X input and we have our Y input. The X input for the first and on top has to be knotted first. So we'll put a knot in there and we say not X goes in like that. And normal Y goes in like that. So this Y here will just go up and join. And then on the bottom end now, we have not Y which will be this knotted here, not y. So we'll take the y from there and normal x. So the normal x will kind of just jump over here and fly in. And that is the circuit for it. So your marks will be as follows. For coming up with the equation, you will get two marks. You'll get one mark for the, um, for the plus sign and you get next mark for getting the the um, products on either side correct and then drawing the circuit you get one mark for the um, or gate you get one mark for having both of the um, and gates and then you get a mark for the nut gates being in the right place and then you get a mark for the lines yeah they'll give you a mark for the lines going in the right place all right, next one is draw a clearly label block diagram of a 4 to 1 multiplexer, 4 inputs, 1 output. Clearly label block diagram, so this will be part C here. Clearly label block diagram, 4 to 1 multiplexer, so 4 inputs, 1 output. So this will be I0, I1, I2, and I3, because you have 4 inputs, and then you have your output. In order for the, four, for the four inputs to be able to be selected, you need to have a S0 and a S1. And this is the multiplexer. Six marks. C part two. Determine the result of 0111 plus 1110. If it could be stored as a binary number, so you have to add them. Let's add them. 0111. And then 1110. All right, 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1, carry 1. 1 plus 1 is 1, 0. So you're getting 5 bits. So the answer is no, it cannot. So determine the, the, the result. I'm going to correct one mark and put in the and put in no is another mark. All right, yeah, so because this was so easy, I just kind of skipped it. 
Oh man. So this will be 1 plus 2 plus 8 plus 16. Yeah, that's, that seems about right. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Yeah, so 16 and 8 is 24, 25, 26, 27. Showing all working, finding largest and smallest integers that can be represented using 4 bit sign and mag sign magnitude. Alright, in the leftmost bit is to be used on the other bit size. Right. So, how are how you showing all this working? I'm really not too sure what they want to see for the working. What we have here is the largest and smallest integers that can be represented using sign and magnitude. So, if we say that this, if we have 4 bits and we have 0, 0, 0, 0. This bit here is um, uh, negative or positive. So the largest positive number we could get will be 0, 1, 1, 1, which is the number 7. So the highest number we could get is that. The largest negative number that we could get would be 1, 1, 1, 1, which will be negative 7. Because this here is the sign for negative. Cool, two marks, one mark for getting this, one mark for getting that. All right, part four now is um, four bit two's complement of negative five. So we have to start off with the five to binary. And five in binary is one, zero, one, but it's four bits. So we have to fill it up with, with one bit there. Then we have to invert. And when we invert, we will get one zero one zero, and then we have to add one plus one, and you get zero one one zero one. And this here is the two complement of minus five. You get one mark for finding the binary of it, I guess, and then you get the next mark for inverting and adding one. So that would be where the two marks is. All right, explain what is meant by each of the following terms. What is word size? The maximum number of bits the CPU can process. Right, that basically means it could either be like a 32-bit CPU or 64-bit CPU. Meaning you can't send anything more than that inside the poor CPU because it'll be like, hey, I can't handle all that data. So if you send an instruction as 32 bits, it will be able to handle it. If it's set an instruction at 64 bits, it will be like, nope, sorry, can't work. You want to make sure that you say the maximum number of bits, that's one mark. If it does have number of bits, that wouldn't be good enough because it has to be maximum. And you have to say that it can process. Cache memory is the first level of memory access by the CPU, right? Key things here, you have to say first level of memory, which is one mark, and then it's accessed by the CPU. So, if you have anything along those lines, you should be okay. Clock speed, the rate at which the CPU processes data slash bits. You have to be able to say bits. That's basically what going through the CPU. The, the concept is that there are ones and zeros going through the CPU all the time. So the CPU is here and a bunch of ones and zeros. Every time the clock pulses or every time the clock uh, the clock goes, a zero gets to go in and then something gets to come out. So it's like a, a production line kind of. So you want to make sure that you, you clearly say that it's data or bits going through. So rate at which one mark and then processes data or bits will be the second mark. Okay. Distinguish between each of the following pairs of terms as they pertain to computer memory. RAM and RAM. So you could say RAM permanent and RAM volatile. You could also say um, starts up the computer for RAM. And for RAM, you could say holds temporary programs. Access speed now and access method. Speed. Speed will be like the rate data is sent to the CPU. And the method will be, the best way to say it is how the data is checked. For this, you have to kind of give an example. So you have to say example sequential. Because there's no other way to really explain it, explain it direct. But if you give an example, it will show that you understand. Volatility and capacity cyan. 
All right, volatility will, yes, be the permanence of data in some storage. And capacity is the amount of data that can be stored. Right, so what you'll realize with these questions here is that they, they require you to use specific terms. And the specific terms aren't always straightforward because like, you might use back some of the same words. So what may help is sometimes you may be able to give like an example. So let's say an example here will be like um, for capacity would be like gigabytes. So you could put that there as an example and kind of sell it to the examiner that you know what you're talking about. Right? Kind of like you know how, how we answer questions in IT. When you give an example, you prove to the examiner that you understand what, what you're talking about. So if, if your answer is a little bit shaky, the example will take you over the arm, over the fence. Define the terms instruction set and instruction format. All right. Basic amount of commands the CPU can understand. Good. And the instruction format. The, the way the bits are broken up, basically. The way the bits are organized and you could give a like example like you know upcode and operand even though it's two marks if you put upcode and operand you're clearly showing that you know that that's the instruction format and um the examiner will have no choice but to give you the marks if you just put the way the bits are organized or you write it in a particular way that is not very um straightforward you will you'll end up in trouble so wherever possible you could give an example to prove that you know it because sometimes your questions are a little blurry, you will you'll always you'll always um, you'll win like that. All right, state three types of instructions that are typically included in an instruction set: data manipulation, arithmetic or logic, control or branch. Yeah, control or branch. That's for like you know jumping from one place to another, or usually what we do in when you do if then else is our control or branch because you're choosing different things. All right, that's kind of straightforward. I right, suppose 16 bits are used for representing instructions in a certain computer using a diagram. Explain how a two address instruction can be formatted using the 16 bits. All right, yeah. So what you want to do is you want to break it up into three sets because it's two addressing. So the first bit will be eight, and this is the up code. And this is address one and address two. So basically you're saying first eight is up code and next four is um, address one next for address two all right describe what happens in a typical instruction cycle assuming a direct addressing is used what they're asking it to do is to describe the fetch the code execute store cycle so fetch is the up code is saved from memory the instruction is decoded by the CU. Then the, the next guy is the ALU performs the calculation and the CU stores the results in memory. Probably breaking it up into five marks. I think it's one mark for each, right? Have two marks for um the fact that it's direct addressing so i think it's the memory part now will tell you that is two marks this last part here is two marks but it's one for this one one for that one and one for that one 